So good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. I decided to run around a little bit. Let me keep this. Uh, so again, good morning. Um, some of you I know, and uh, some of you I may be speaking to for the very first time. Um, so I'd just like to thank you for being here. Um, I, I was at Agape this morning for our early service, which is called the Way of Meditation. And I talked to Reverend Michael a little bit before I came here, and so he wanted to make sure that I brought greetings from him. So I'm going to say it the way we used to say it back in the old church that I came out of. And so the way we used to say it traditionally in the Christian church is, you know, we bring greetings from Reverend Michael Narbeck with the founder and spiritual director of Agape International Spiritual Center. And I also bring greetings from the Agape Practitioner Corps who are holding us in a field, even as they are holding Reverend Michael in a field, even as they are holding the world in a field of love and harmony. So we're all doing one thing at the same time. So there is this space that's been created now that we're all in, and we're all in it together. So I'm, I'm glad that um, the song that was sang, tell me your name again? Jimmy. I couldn't find it in my notes. I'm glad Jimmy sang the song that he did because it fits right into the theme for today. And I'll get back to that in a minute. The theme is joy and repetition. And then the subtitle came back and forth with me. So I gave it to Patricia and Jessica one way. And then I literally could read it back and forth. And so it is living the paradox. Or it could be said the paradox of living. So that's really what we're going to talk about today. And so I, I have to be very mindful today because it's Father's Day. And there's a lot that comes to me with that. And even before I, I, even before I deal with the Father's Day aspect of it, exactly two years ago, on this day, I was gathering with all of my relatives, loved ones, family, and friends, and doing a memorial service for my father. And so it was one of the most transformative moments of my life, because I haven't been the same. I have not been the same since we ushered my father over to the other side of the veil. My life just hasn't been the same. It's not possible. And so because of the, the life that I live and the spiritual practice that I have, I'm able to do that differently than I might have. Almost a year ago, um, or just over a year ago, was the first time that I stepped into Soul Center. And so those of you that were either here then or know that very specifically, whenever you see me wearing the bow ties that I wear, it's specifically in honor and recognition of my father who was doing it way before it was trendy, way before everybody else was like, oh, we're post whatever style this means that we wear bow ties now. And it's, it's amazing because I am very different from my father and very much the same. And as I've gotten to know him even more in his passing, in his transition, because I have really come closer to my dad in these past two years than ever, I realized how much the same we are. And I remember all the jokes that people would say about my dad when he would wear his bow ties. I get all those jokes now. <laughs> so some people are familiar with the, the Nation of Islam and the traditional community that was based out of Chicago and the brothers will be in the neighborhood and they'll wear very nice suits, they'll stand on the street corners, they'll sell the final call newspaper and they'll sell bean pies. So that everybody asks me if I have any bean pies or if they can get a final call. And it's just this little bit of humor from the community that I come from and that lightness. And I get that. And it was funny to me how it was, it was just happening regularly. And there was just this rhythm about it. And really that's what I want to talk about today is I really want to talk about the rhythm of the universe and that pace that we don't recognize. And so there's been a lot of movement on the planet, right? Significant people or events have been happening that have been getting our attention. And it's been calling us into this very feeling energy. So a lot of people 
were significantly impacted by the transition of, of the musical artist Prince just two months ago. I know I was. And then, just a couple of weeks ago, Muhammad Ali, who is fascinating to observe the difference between how he was appreciated in his living and when he was alive. There's been such a difference in how, they, how they, the world has received this man, you know, versus how they did when he was doing the most significant work of his life and taking the greatest risks of his life. But there's kind of a rhythm to it all. There really is. And so then there was another musical artist in the hip hop community that made his transition that was in a 90s group just this past week. And then we deal with all of our family in Orlando, right? Because that's really who they are. The citizens that were in that nightclub, they were our family. Because there's only one family. You know, we, we, we were born into a world that was separated by land masses and rivers and streets and counties and avenues. And on top of that, <laughs> for some reason, human beings have had this brilliant idea that I'm saying sarcastically to lay even more things on top of it to separate us, to divide us, instead of pulling each other closer. But there's a rhythm to that as well. But if anybody who feels like they have rhythm, <laughs> or anybody who's like my dad, who just did not have rhythm. <laughs> my mother's a singer and she, she doesn't dance a lot, so she's got rhythm, but she keeps her movement in a box. You know, she, she's good side to side, real good. And if they give her a couple of steps, she can do that. Then she lets everybody else do all the real movement. <laughs> but anybody who knows anything about rhythm, you know whether you have it or you don't. But you also know that it also doesn't matter because in every musical stanza, in every beat, there's always a beat for somebody. You know, even if it's not the beat that somebody had agreed that we're going to dance on, that may not work, but I've got this beat over here and it works for me. Because some of the most beautiful rhythms and movement that I've ever seen are people that move beyond whatever the squared, cornered rhythm and agreement is in dancing, right? Like ballet, as beautiful as it is and, and modern, they are not on a beat. They are in the movement energetically of that kind of, of music, if they're using music at all. And then dancers, you can see people dance and there's no music going on, but you can see the rhythm of their heart or their, you know, they, you can feel the joy that's beating and pulsating within them. There's a rhythm. And that rhythm is everywhere. You must also note that the universe is constantly teaching us about rhythm. Everything all around us works at a rhythm. There's a spiritual law of rhythm. We don't observe it as such all the time, but it is. 365 days and, a, and, and like a quarter, right? <laughs> we, we, we chase around the sun. That's a long beat. I'll see you guys here in a year. But it comes back, right? <laughs> right? Women, you have your cycles. It's on a rhythm. Men, we have ours too. It's just not as obvious. <laughs> right? And any woman that spent any time with a man, she knows his. <laughs> she knows his as well. It's just a rhythm within all of us. Sometimes we know we need to get away and we need to take a break from the world because we've been inundated by it. There's a rhythm. There's a beat to it all. And it's not always as explicit as someone may make us seem. And yet it is simple. So this world is changing and there's all these events that are happening and you're here in it. And the challenge really is, how do I live in this world? How do I live in a world where there's, I'm so inundated with violence? I'm so inundated with people taking things from other people. How do I live in a world where I truly do feel powerless? How do I live in a world where there are people I know that are right there 
that need help and I just don't know how to help them? How do I deal with my own self in my own quiet times when I know I need help and I need support and I'm the one that everybody else comes to? Or I don't really communicate regularly with anybody. I kind of come and go. There are all these different versions of us that are out here. And it's still happening on a rhythm. And there is this paradox. Years ago, about three, four years ago, I gave my first spiritual talk at a wonderful spiritual community. And the topic was the trans paradox. Now, my friends in the gay community would have found the topic by itself very interesting. <laughs> what is the trans paradox, Jason? What are we talking about here? Let's be really clear. And I found it even more humorous years later thinking about it, and it came back to me. And in the trans paradox, what I talked about was this idea that we're called to be bridges or energies across. Whenever you hear the word trans, Really, we're talking about something that goes across. So especially when we start talking about individuals that identify themselves as trans, all they're really telling us is that I'm not here or there, that I am this bridge across something that you have tried to make binary. Mm -hmm. Doesn't that feel completely different? Mm -hmm. if, no matter how someone else has told us about it, the people in the trans community are bringing this barrier down from this binary, limited concept of the world that we've lived in so long. That's all they're doing. And they're living their lives fully, and they want people to support their ability to just live, thrive, and be in joy like the rest of us. So the trans paradox was this idea of having to be this being, as we all are, that has to do more than just be this, whatever I identify me is, because we're more than that. Because we walk into a room and we transmit energy. We walk into a place and we talk about the challenges that we have and we want to transcend them. We don't want to pretend like they never happened. We want to go beyond whatever that limited idea of that condition, situation, or experience is and rise. We want to transcend. We want to ascend, but we don't want to forget where we come from because we were rooted in that mud, just like the lotus, and the lotus is in the mud for a reason, and it has all the nutrients and everything that it has in it, and it comes out of that murky mud, and the lotus is one of the most amazing blossoms and flowers and seeds, and its whole process is exquisite. And yet, it's never not itself. It's all of it. And so we start looking at this world that we're in, and it seems somewhat paradoxical. And so I was really grateful for what Jimmy was singing, because in the song, All of Me, one of the lyrics is something to the effect of, I'm underwater, but I'm still breathing fine. I don't know about you, but I've been underwater, and I don't really breathe well underwater. <laughs> I am not Aquaman, though I look forward to the movie when it comes out, <laughs> see how he does this, but I just don't. I'm able to hold my breath, I'm able to to clench and clutch and even move and swim and have fun underwater, but I can't breathe. But I can have an experience underwater and still be fine, can't I? But if you are afraid and you're succumbed by fear and you're clutching under these limited ideas, or maybe even you're in the ocean and something's chasing you or you're losing something, whatever the situation is, you can be underwater and just not feel fine. You know, one of the other lyrics was um, you're, something about you're, you're crazy and I'm out of my mind. Right. <laughs> Isn't that a good couple? <laughs> mm, wish you the best. <laughs> but in reality, haven't we all had moments? I'm going to talk to myself. <laughs> haven't you had a moment where you were out of your mind? 
that if, if anybody, like, if, like, like, like those reality shows, if anybody actually had a camera on me in that moment, I'd probably lose my job, I'd probably lose my spouse, my mother might not talk to me for a while, I might have embarrassed the family going back five centuries, <laughs> whatever it is, just wasn't my shining moment. And yet, the paradox in that is we have to keep living. That no matter how many Orlandos happen, we are called to live. And living is a particular thing. Living is not running away, hiding, clutching, and succumbing to fear, doubt, worry, and that tension. Living is having that experience and still stepping out of your house. It was still on Sunday morning last week, all of the brave LGBT community and their allies that still went to the Hollywood Pride Parade. Less than 12 hours after that shooting had happened, they were there living, opening their hearts, holding their hands tighter than ever before, squeezing each other, laughing, dancing, doing whatever they could. They were living. And we were called to live with them. That's the paradox. See, the thing about courage, courage doesn't exist unless there is something that would talk us out of doing whatever it is we are doing. The risk to live, to break free, to do something that has never been done before requires you to do the one thing that you fear the most. That is absolutely a paradox. In order to have the family, in order to have the job, in order to have the career that is calling you, in order for this world to be a world that really works for everyone, we must be willing to be and do what we have never been before. And it takes a risk. For some reason, the, the phrase NIMBY came to mind for me this week. And most of you who have heard it, is a it's a phrase and it's an acronym that's often tossed around in political circles and it's used to say, not in my backyard. And it's often used in a very ugly way that says, we don't want this group here, we don't want that program here, we don't want you to build that here, whatever. And I could not understand why that was coming to mind when I'm on my way out to Orange County. <laughs> <laughs> However, I have a very strong practice of re-qualifying things. And so Patricia was lovingly talking about how I work with my clients. And very often, we have ideas of things that are so rooted in us that we don't realize that they are truly a barrier to our living. So some people who have gone through spiritual practices, they were raised Catholic, some people are Reformed Christians, Reformed Catholics, Reformed Jews, Reformed everything, whatever. They've gone through the journey, and they just, I don't like the word God anymore. Every time I hear the word God, it reminds me of where I came from. It reminds me of the woundedness and the hurt and the pain from the life that I freed myself from. And so when we start off, most of the time, all right, whatever word works for you. Universe, spirit, the great I am. As long as we understand that it never gave us a name. It gave us many things, but it is not a man. It is not a woman. It is all of these things. And the reality is that whatever might be there holding us, that might be tightening us, getting us our attention. There's something to look at there. Any of that resistance, we want to look at. So what we do is we requalify. So I took NIMBY, mixed it up a little bit, and I realized that now I'm more because of you. That's what NIMBY is for me. Because whenever we invite those programs in, whenever we invite those people into our communities, whenever we invite those people into our lives, whatever the program is, whatever it is, we're more. 
It may be inconvenient. It may create a hardship. It may be a difficulty. But we're required to expand because we can. And then we have become more because we're unwilling to limit ourselves. So my new in me is, well, I may not have wanted to right away. But now I'm more because of you. I'm more because you're here. I'm more because this program is here. I'm more because we're doing it this way. And so that rhythm is existing in all of us. I talk about that rhythm and I talk about all of the things that we've had to do over and over again. Anybody had to learn the same lesson more than once? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Anybody date the same person more than one time? <laughs> Unfortunately, we might say. <laughs> Anybody make the same mistake in friendships over and over again? Or in however we're living? So we often talk about, well, why, do we, why does this keep happening to me? This is not happening to you. You might be happening to it. And you might be making this choice. But the universe is going to keep sending things around you at that particular rate and particular rhythm until you get on the rhythm. And just like any dancer, you figure out the right move. And once you figure out the right rhythm and you figure out the right move, you can slide right on over there. If you've ever been a woman, this happens to you at, at, at a dance hall maybe, that one guy walks up to you and you're dancing with your friends or whatever, and he starts dancing with you and you've got that move, you slide to the side, <laughs> and you're over here now. It could simply because he wasn't kind, he wasn't, that wasn't where you were right now. He didn't even introduce himself to you. But you've got that move, it's like, hey, now I'm over here now. <laughs> I've learned my lesson when it comes to people like that. You know, and, and it's not about that person. You see, it's never the circumstance or the situation that you're dealing with your rhythm. Your rhythm is always about you. Your rhythm is always about your connection to the universe, your connection to what's happening in your life, what you're creating, what you're birthing, what you're bringing into existence. That's what it's about. Every singer or songwriter will tell you the same thing. Every actor who has ever performed a monologue or has been in a scene with anybody, they will tell you that the rhythm of those words at the rhythm of existence, at the rhythm of life, when I say something in a particular way, mm -hmm. it lands differently. And it's a rhythm. And so there is a paradox that you're caught in, in this life, that in order to really live, you've got to risk. In order to really live, in order to actually have a life that you can say that you live, Everyone that's ever been to a memorial or a celebration of life for someone like I was at my father exactly two years ago today. The things that people will say about you will often reflect the risks that you took. How you laid your life down for other people and set aside and made time for others. How you supported people, how you gave to them when it was their way of showing you how to expand. And listen to how that came through. They were showing you how you could expand. Mm -hmm. They gave you an opportunity to support their life, an opportunity to give to them, an opportunity to seed into them, an opportunity to transform your life. As the director of the Sacred Service Ministry at Agape, the biggest thing that I tell people is that your service transforms you first. So as you think about the celebration of life today, every moment, there is a certain joy in that repetition once you get into it. Once you realize that <coughs> that feeling, you know that feeling when those, those first few notes of your favorite song come on? Name that too, this is that great show where they would give you like, I can name that note, in that song in four notes, or in six notes, or in two. I'm like, in two, really? And the people do it. But it happens to me too. I'm listening to the radio, or I'm out somewhere, and I hear, oh, that's, there goes my song. Or that song, it just weakens me. It just, it just relaxes me fully into the moment. There's a rhythm of life that has that joy in it. That once you become familiar that this rhythm is out there, that when you have the struggles, that when you have the aches and the pains, that when the back or the body, when your, 
your, your relationships with your children become whatever they become. Whatever is happening, the bank account, your own health, whatever it is, you have a completely different experience. Because I know that things are transitional, because I know that this is not going to stay this way, because I know that this is not the eternal reality of existence, joy can well up within me. And I can look for the rhythm. And I can listen to what spirit is telling to me. I can listen to what my body is telling me. I can listen to what the complaints or the compliments, the love or the joy or whatever it is that I'm experiencing in this life is telling me. And I can find that it's not as much of a paradox for me anymore. It's simply that I'm able to walk across these two worlds. One, a limited idea of who and what I've been and what I know myself as, across to the other, which is the infinite possibilities of who I am, what I've called to be, and the actual blooming of the seeds that were planted in me way before I ever entered into this incarnation. Mm -hmm. That's what's available to us all. Mm -hmm. And that's what I offer to you today. Mm -hmm. awesome. Thank you. 